Hey yo, what's good reader fam? It's time for another reading vlog. We reading and vlogging. We reading and vlogging. This week I really only have one book that I would like to read and that book is Seriously Happy, a funny book about horrible things by Jenny Lawson. I was gifted this book by my cousin Christmas 2017, I believe. That sounds right. And I haven't read it yet. Are we surprised? No, not at all. I've been interested in reading it, but I've never kicked my butt to read it until now. Now is the time. This is the week it's gonna happen. This is a memoir by Jenny Lawson, who is a big time blogger, I believe. I'm pretty sure her blog just blew up overnight and the next thing she knew she had a book deal. I haven't read her first book, let's pretend this never happened, but if I end up enjoying this one, then I'll be sure to pick up this one. This book follows Jenny's experience with depression and anxiety, and she kind of tries to tackle it in a comedic way, which I'm really interested to see how she kind of comes at it with that angle because I feel like that's a topic that's really hard to talk about in a humorous way. Like what could be funny about depression and anxiety? I have no idea. I'm really curious to see how I end up enjoying this book. You may be wondering why exactly I decided to pick this book up this week. The first reason is pretty simple. I just want to read it. The second reason is that I'm just kind of trying to diversify my reading this year. I don't ever want to be reading the same thing over and over again. And I mean that in the age group, like I want I want to read a lot of middle grade, a lot of YA, a lot of adults. I mean that in genre. I want to read genres that I don't normally read. I want to read sci-fi. I want to read non-fiction, poetry, historical fiction, all the things that I don't normally read. I want to be reading those things. I also want to read the things that I love too this year, but I just want to make sure that I'm actively reading things that I wouldn't normally read. I also just want to make sure that I'm actively reading more books by people of color this year. I feel like diversifying what I read is always a challenge that I set out for myself each year. I definitely don't always achieve the goal that I set out for myself, but there's no harm in setting this goal. I feel like it's a really good goal to kind of work towards and do better at. Anyways, that was random chatter about what I'm going to be reading this year. Do you guys have any reading goals this year? Let me know down below in the comments. But for now, let's get to reading. I've gotten 95 pages into Furiously Happy. This book is just easy to fall into. The stories in this are so funny. There are some that are like, ooh, that's really sad. It does dig deep into her talking about her depression and her anxiety, so it's not always like this good old fun, happy-go-lucky time. There are stories in here that are definitely really sad to read about, but there are also just so many funny ones. She has just a fantastic writing voice. She does a really great job of encapsulating her personality through her writing. I do kind of wish that I would have read her debut book before I read this this book because it makes some references to that first book. It just references from time to time some of the stories from her first book and I have no idea what she's referencing. I'm like, I have no idea. But even still, that's not really affecting my overall enjoyment of this. I'm still really enjoying this. There's a story in here that I found super inspiring. It talks about how she went to record her audiobook for her first book. The following is not a spoiler for this book. There are tons of stories in here. Skip to here if you don't want to hear this. And it ended up being one of the worst experiences for her. Like it did not help her anxiety at all. If anything, it just kind of heightened her anxiety. And so she's just like, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. She ended up reaching out to Neil Gaiman and she's like, what the heck do I do? And he's just like, pretend you're good at it. Which I feel like is such a simple yet effective approach that we should be taking to everything in our lives. So she gets in the recording booth and pretends that she's good at narrating audiobooks and she nails it. Moral of the story is that I need to pretend that I'm a writer in order to become a good writer. That's all the tea I've got for you now. I know this is super random and will probably make no sense to any of you. It doesn't even really make sense to me, but I started a reading journal. Why did I need to start a reading journal? I 
don't need to start a reading journal. My channel is literally dedicated to the books I read. Why would I need to document my reading any more than I already do? It doesn't make sense. I know. And yet, here we are. To be fair, I'll more than likely end up giving up on this. Last year, I tried to start a bullet journal, and I lasted three days into the new year updating my bullet journal, and then it just went to crap. So there's a very good chance that this will not last. But as I'm not really making content like TBRs and anticipated releases and stuff like that, I thought that I could put that kind of content into this book. That way I feel less crappy about myself when I don't complete my TBR. I always feel really crappy when I make TBR videos and I don't read any of the books on the TBR. <laughs> it's the worst. I'm also gonna track the books I buy and receive in this. I feel like doing that will help me be more aware of my buying habits and also the books that I say yes to send my way. I'm also hoping that this will be beneficial when I end up doing reviews because I'll have all my thoughts written down and I can refer to those thoughts. That way my thoughts aren't all over the place up in my brain because it can be really hard when I sit down to review a book and I'm like, hmm, how did I feel about this book? I don't remember, it's been way too long. Then I can refer to my handy dandy reading journal here and be like, oh, that's what I thought about that book. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Do you guys like how I'm trying to justify this right now? I will probably do a flip through of this at the end of the year when I complete it. If I complete it, keyword if I complete it, because I more than likely will give up on this in a week. All you journal keepers, please say a little prayer for me. Pray that I keep up with my journal. I will show you what I have so far. I haven't completed this, obviously. There's still some setting up work to do, and I'm still trying to figure out what I want to put on certain pages and whatnot, but I'll show you what I did today. I've got the sticker on here that Kat got me for Christmas. Shout out to Kat from Cattytastic. When you open it, you open right to my 2019 reading goals. I'm always wary about talking about my reading goals on my channel because I feel like I will I'll never complete them if I talk about them in my videos. I feel like it would go like my TBR videos. I would talk about my goals and then I would never complete any of those goals. Then on this next page, I have this series TBR, which this is completed series that I would like to complete by the beginning of summer, maybe? We'll see if that happens. I have a blank page next to this and I would like to put something here as well. I just don't know what yet. Then the next page, I've got my January tracker, which is pretty empty right now. I've got my upcoming releases on here. I've got my TBR so far. I'm gonna put a section for books I bought on here as well and also books that I received But I haven't gotten that far yet. This is so weird I feel like such a journal flip through person right now then on the next page I have my first book entry, which is obviously clearly not done I have title author genre series number format pages audience published date date read rating I've got the books description I don't know what else I'm gonna put on this page There's obviously some blankness that I could add to down here and then over on this side I will put in my thoughts on Aragon. That way I can refer to my thoughts in an upcoming books I've read recently. So yeah, I probably won't talk about this much in upcoming reading vlogs because if I do complete this journal, I would like to do a flip through. I would like to become one of those people that can do a journal flip through. Those people are really dedicated though and super artsy fartsy and I'm not artsy fartsy. Like this is pretty minimalistic. So I don't even really know if a reading journal flip through would be that interesting. We'll see. Maybe I'll get super artsy and crafty throughout the year, but I highly doubt it. Let me know in the comments if you guys keep a reading journal. I'm curious. Let me know in the comments down below. I just had the biggest realization when I was reading this, so I need to talk about it. So I'm here to talk about it. This is kind of a reading update, but it's not really that big of a reading update. But anyway, the whole time that I've been reading this, I'm like, Ginny Lawson reminds me of somebody. Like, her voice, the way she talks, the way she tells stories, it just reminds me of somebody, and I can't put my finger on it. Then it dawned on me. This book literally sounds like it's written in the voice of Lorelai Gilmore. I guess I should say who that is. It's a character from Gilmore Girls. Just the way the author kind of tells different stories through this book, it just reminds me of Laura like Gilmore. It's kind of like this stream of conscious way of telling a story, like she says everything that comes to her mind, and she sometimes low-key overdoes it a little bit, but that's besides the point. Anyway, that's my update. Just felt like sharing that. Woo! Ooh, but I'm back because I also wanted to talk about something else because this week I got a little bit Overwhelmed by all my goals that I had set for 2019 And I just wanted to talk about it because I feel like a lot of you guys could relate to this But I set up a lot of goals for myself You guys saw some of my goals in my last video and last week I did a really good job of kind of keeping up with things that I wanted to accomplish and I knew that this was gonna happen I knew that this week I would become overwhelmed with everything that I had planned for myself I always overwork myself. I over plan every little thing in my life. Every night before I go to bed, I kind of plan out my next day and what it's going to look like, all the things that I'm going to try to accomplish. And I always, always, always over plan, which I know is such a bad thing to do because it kind of 
of makes you feel like you're not accomplishing anything. Even though I am accomplishing some of those things on that list, it always feels like I'm not doing enough. It doesn't affect me as much as it did anymore, but I can still feel like the weight of just not being good enough or not accomplishing enough when I'm accomplishing so much as it is. And I just need to be kinder to myself and I need to be more aware of what I actually can accomplish each day because we all have our limits and we need to be aware of that and work with it. So I don't know, I just wanted to pop on here and say if you're feeling overwhelmed by all the goals you set for 2019 and you feel like you're not good enough and you feel like you're not accomplishing enough, you are, don't be so mean to yourself. And that's another thing that I'm gonna be working on this year is not being so hard on myself when I don't accomplish everything that I wanna accomplish. I need to just take one day at a time. We've come to the end of the reading vlog. I have completed Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson. I ended up really, really, really liking this book a lot. Maybe more than I thought I would. I knew that I would enjoy it, but I didn't know that I would enjoy it this much. I think I need to get my hands on some more memoirs because I feel like I really enjoy this genre. I just haven't read a lot of memoirs. So if you have any memoir recommendations, hit me up in the comments down below. I'll be looking out for them. I do want to point out that with this book, there are quite a few trigger warnings. There's some self-harm scenes in this book. Even the talk about depression and anxiety could be pretty triggering, so just be aware of that if you want to pick this book up. But what I really liked about this book was just the honesty overall. Ginny Lawson does not paint her life to be perfect at all. She bears it all. While she does showcase the good times, she also showcases the bad times, and the bad times in this can be really bad. Reading this honestly just felt like I was listening to a bunch of stories that a friend was telling me about their life, and I really liked that aspect. I don't really know how to critique this book because I haven't read many memoirs, so I don't know how other ones are formatted. In fact, I've only read like one other memoir, I think. This one right here, We Should Hang Out Sometime by Josh Sunquist. I'm pretty sure that's the only other memoir I've read. I did DNF one at one point because I hated it so much. But anyway, with that being said, I don't know how most memoirs are like formatted and just like how they're overall presented. So maybe if I were more well-versed in the world of memoirs, I wouldn't have enjoyed this, but I did really like it. I've never visited her blog, but it did kind of feel like that blog format. Like each story was kind of like a blog post. I guess another one of my critiques is just the fact that Jenny Lawson kept trying to push herself as this very interesting and quirky person. And at some points it just got me thinking, yeah, we get it. You're weird and different. You don't have to keep pushing that narrative. We get it. But overall, I don't really have anything negative to say about this book. This book made me laugh out loud so many times. It did also hurt my heart at other points because of some of the things that she's gone through. But overall, this was a delightful read and I definitely want to check out her first book as well. You guys should let me know down below in the comments if you have read Furiously Happy and what your thoughts are on it. Or just let me know down below in the comments a book that you've read recently. I want to hear from you guys down below in the comments. If you like this video, be sure to go and give this video a like. If you want to see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thanks for watching guys. I hope your day is bright and that tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye! Oh.